Let's talk about my favorite tool to plot and plan a book right now, especially if you want to create what's called a series Bible or a story Bible, and that is Notion. As you guys have seen previously on this channel, I've shared many different novel plotting and outlining tools I've used over the years. But as I've been using this Preptober to prep the sequel of my YA fantasy for NaNoWriMo, I have to say hands down, Notion is the tool I wish I had started with when I was writing book one. I even took some time earlier this month to try some software I've used in the past like Scrivener, and I looked into a few online programs like Campfire Write, dabble and plotter but seriously notion is like all of these programs in one free completely online software because notion is very customizable it can also be a little overwhelming at first and that's why i initially created this notion for writers tutorial that is for complete beginners so if you're brand new to notion i highly suggest watching this one first where i walk through all the basics that helped me get a handle on notion when i was first getting started plus you'll get access to the free templates i included in that video which is linked down below. Then think of this video as kind of a Notion 2.0 tutorial, where I'll share a walkthrough of my entire series Bible so you can see all the pages and features I use. And then I'll show you how to use some advanced features like databases and tagging to create the functionality of these novel planning pages. Plus, I'll give you access to those free templates I mentioned that will help you customize these pages for yourself with ease. Ready to get started? Let's head over to my computer. Let's first look at my series Bible so you can see exactly how I use it. And then and like I said, I will show you later how you can create these pages yourself. This first page I have here is more or less a homepage or directory of some quick links I think I want to reference more frequently as I plot and draft my book but all of the pages are listed in this menu here. The first page I have is all about my characters. This one is for locations. Then I have a page for cultures, magic systems, a few other things that I'll go over later, a glossary and pronunciation guide. And then I have these two sections for outlining each season or book in my series. If you're wondering why I use the word season real quick, my story was first rapid released as a serial series of six eBooks, kind of like a TV show, but in book form. That was season one that I packaged into one physical novel, which I'll reference to as book one. Season one or book one is already out in the world. So what I've used this section for is actually going back through season one or book one to record all the details I've already written as a reference guide as I plot and plan season two or book two. So this is my section that I'm working on right now where I'm outlining season two. Then I'm using this page to create a drafting plan for NaNoWriMo. I then have a word tracker as well. Oops, and then this should probably go up here because this is resources that I'm using for the series with links and research for the story. And then here is what I'll show you at the end with those basic templates that you can use to create these pages. To show you a little bit more of these pages in depth, here is my characters page. And the first section I have here is for my main characters or my fairy heirs that compete for the fairy crown in my story. Then I have this second section that has the rulers for each of the fairy clans. And like I said, not everything's filled out, so there are more to add, but here's a few so far. Then I have a section for my side characters. And I also included a section for the fairy pirates in my story. And you can see here that my main character, Quinn, is both in the pirate section and in the main section. But the beauty of Notion is I only had to create this page once and using some of the features, I can enable it to show up in both sections automatically. Then I'll just show you real quick, as I click on each one, we have a picture of the character and then my character profile that has these toggle headers to organize all the basic details of each character. This profile with all of these details is also a template that I've created and can easily add to every character that I create for this page. Another feature that I love is tagging, and I'm using this in a multitude of ways, but one of them is to tag certain characters together. So I have a section for key relationships, and then I've tagged Quinn's father, her mother, her brother, and if I want to, I can just click her father's name and it takes me directly to his character profile. My locations page is very similar where I have sections for different types of locations in my story. This one is for the five fairy provinces in my story for the different fairy clans. And then I have a few other ones here. If I go into one of the fairy provinces, you'll see that I also have a locations profile with different details that I can toggle as well. I also use the tagging feature to tag characters that live in this province. So at any time I can go in here and see who lives there and then click on their profile, which brings me to Quinn's page. And you can see this is where I've tagged it right here. 
The next section I have is for cultures. So I have my five fairy clans and then other cultures that exist in the world. In the culture pages, I again have a basic template where I have a description for that fairy clan as well as other details and even a section where I'm including some quotes from book one that have to do with that clan as well. And in the same way with my locations and with my characters, I also have backlinks here to everyone that is a Gwillian. And you can see Quinn is a Gwillian here. So when I go to her page, when I want to remember some details about her fairy clan or her province, or again, other characters she's connected to, or as I'll get to even some items that are important to her, I can just click on one of those tags and it brings me directly to that page. I also have these cards for magic systems, which still need to be filled out more. And then in the other category, I included items that are important to the story, different species that exist in my fairy world. And then I also have terms here that are specific to my world as well. This term section actually started out as the glossary and pronunciation guide, which exists in the back of the paperback version of my book. But then I realized I wanted to include even more details about each of these. So then I also created this section. Then we get into outlines, which I think there are so many different ways you could probably do outlining in Notion. And I'll show you a couple when I get to the features breakdown. But just to show you an example for season one, I actually plot my ebook episodes in a five act structure. So I can just click in here. And this is the very simple breakdown of the five act structure for episode one. Then I have this second section that has the simple breakdown, but then I can add individual cards for the individual scenes. Or I can include a lot more detail and even reorganize the cards if I'm in the plotting phase. Again, this is not fully filled out because this book is actually already written, but I want to show you guys an example of what I'm working on for season two without spoiling the story for anyone. Then I'm using this page to create that plan I mentioned. And this first view is kind of like a Kanban board. So for example, if I want to plot a specific scene, I can edit this to say which scene I'm plotting. And then I can say I've either not started it or it's in progress or it's completed. Then I can also add dates to my to-do list so I can work out by November 1st, I'm writing scene one and either in the Kanban board view or here, I can click the status and say not started in progress or completed. To also help me stay on track, I'm going to use this word tracker. And here's just a sample of, I can set the date of when I'm writing, how many minutes I wrote. And actually down here, it's going to keep adding up all my words so I know exactly how many words I've written. Finally, this is just a page that I'm using to host my main Pinterest board for this story so I can easily click on that. And then I've got another page here that I can click to see some website links to research and other things that I find helpful. Excited to make a similar series Bible for yourself? Here's how. The first thing I would do is create a completely new workspace for each story you're creating. Thankfully with Notion, you can create as many personal workspaces that you want for free. Simply click the dot 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 in your account, click create a workspace, and make sure you select for myself to create a personal plan that again is free and click continue. You will then get a blank workspace to start creating your pages from scratch. Here I'll show you how to use some advanced features like databases, database templates, and tagging to create some of the functionality I showed you in my series Bible. But if there's any basic features I use quickly that you would like more of a step-by-step -step breakdown of, don't forget to check out that first video I mentioned for Notion beginners. Let's first talk about databases, specifically gallery databases, which is what I use to make nearly all of my series Bible pages from my characters, locations, and cultures pages to even my outlining pages. To get started quickly, I'm actually going to use one of the free templates I've created and duplicate the one I've titled story profiles and outlining cards. I'll simply click duplicate at the top here and then select what workspace I wanna duplicate it to. You can see now that it's shown up in my blank workspace and say we want this to be our characters page. This template already has a gallery database set up to use, but if you wanted to create a new one, all you have to do is go to a new line and type backslash and then gallery, then say new database. I'm going to stick with the one we had before and don't forget to title your database as this will become helpful later. Then you can go into each card and create your first character profile. If you want to make things easy for yourself and use the same character template for each profile, make sure you click create a template first right here. This page says you're editing a template for this specific database. Name your template 
and create the fields you want in each profile. For example, character name, maybe you want personality, physical description, key relationships. If you need ideas for your character profile or world building profiles, you can also download my free profiles when you sign up for my newsletter and paste it into your template here to customize it the way you want. For example, you may want to make your character profile section headers into toggle headers by clicking the six dots next to what you want to make a header out of, typing in toggle, and selecting the toggle size you want. Then type any subheaders below each section. Now you can open and collapse these sections to make it easier to navigate everything. I also like making the character name header, but not a toggle header, and giving it a colored background. Then when you're done with your template, click back, and your character profile template is sitting right here. Simply click it, and now you can customize your character's name and details. Let's call this character character number one. Now your card looks like this. But if you want to add an image, simply add a new line, type backslash and image. Here you can upload your own, embed an image link, or find an image on Unsplash. Simply type in a descriptor that might match your character or the mood of your character and select an image you like. Now this picture will show up as the featured image for your character card. I'll create a couple more characters. And now I can also reorder the characters if I want and use the tagging feature to connect them. So let's say that character one has a key relationship with character two. We simply type the at symbol and then the name of the character. Now I can simply click that character's name to get to their page. And this character also now has a backlink to the first character. Additionally, if you want to divide your characters into multiple sections, such as main characters, villains, and secondary characters, you might think the best thing to do is to create a completely new database. But the drawback with that is that the character profile template you just created only exists within this character database. So you won't be able to use that same template automatically in a completely new one. If you create a new gallery database, selecting new database here and a blank card, you'll see that that character profile template does not exist. What you want to do instead is create a linked database, which will include your already existing template. The easiest way to do this is to add a gallery database then click the database you already created in the right hand column. At first you'll see all the characters we've already created, but now you can do a couple of things. First, I'd create a header above each of your sections so you know what each one is for. For example, let's call this one main characters and we can duplicate this for ease drag it on down in front of this one and call this villains. Then you can create tags in each profile to mark your characters as a main character, a villain, or a side character. Do this for all of your characters. Then you can go to filters in a particular section and filter to only show the tags that meet that section's character criteria. This is also helpful for instances like mine where my main character, Quinn, is a fairy heir, but also a pirate. So I can use tags to make her show up in both sections. I've also made a tag section for the fairy clans and marked her as a Gwillian. So if I really wanted to, I could create a gallery and filter it so I only see fae who are in the Gwillian clan. And I would have to get rid of this one if I wanted to see characters who are in the Gwillian clan, but not a fairy heir. Another cool feature about databases is that you can add multiple views of your database. One view is a table, which you can create by clicking the plus sign here and selecting table. Then you can see all of your characters condensed in a table and even add other columns where you can add other details for all characters as well. And you can customize which one you're seeing by going to property shown and hiding or making visible the one you want to see. Again, I use these features for multiple types of pages and have loved the functionality. One of them is for outlining pages. Like I showed before, this gallery consists of a overall outline in one card that has the bare bones story beats and a one line description of each scene. But then I go in more detail with a scene card for each scene. With season two, I'm also experimenting outlining without databases and just using a simple page with toggle headers. Here I create a hierarchy with toggles for each act, 
then the story beats in each act with a short description of that beat, and then scene ideas and descriptions for those scenes under each beat. You can also quickly make some of these other pages with my free templates. For the NaNoWriMo drafting plan, I used my Kanban board template and simply added an additional view that is a calendar view. Now I can toggle between both. I also have a free template for that word tracker and for the resources page, I started with my basic starter template and then you can simply paste direct links or you can type in a word, highlight it, then on a Mac at least click command V and it becomes a direct link. And you can also add additional pages by hitting backslash and then page, which creates a sub page where you can store even more. Also, if you're wondering how I made my custom banners, I made them in Canva with the custom dimensions of 1500 to 500 pixels. Then I found a template I kind of liked and customized it with the colors and text I wanted. I made one for each page, then downloaded them and clicked change cover and then upload to upload my own file. Finally, you might be wondering if you should draft your story in Notion. While I wouldn't say Notion is the best place to actually write your story, you can link to or integrate Google Docs into your Notion to write your story. I might add this to my NaNoWriMo drafting plan. And here I have a couple of options. One is I can hit backslash, type in embed, and then paste a link to my Google Doc. This literally embeds my Google Doc into my Notion. So I can make this bigger and actually start typing my first draft. Another option is to type backslash and then drive and then connect your Google account to browse your Google Drive and find your document. So I'm gonna click my doc here, hit select, but this only creates a clickable image that will bring you to your Google Doc in a separate window. You can't actually type in it here. The third and final way is to simply type something like my draft and then paste the link directly into the text or you can just paste it here. Like this option here, it will take me directly to my Google Doc in a separate window. Plus all I've shown you here is also available through Notion's mobile app and Google Docs also has a mobile app. So I love that I can literally plot and draft my book on the go wherever I am. Ready to create your own Notion Series Bible too? You can definitely follow what I did in this tutorial to make your own from scratch, or you can get all of my free templates by signing up for my newsletter, which I'll link down below. If you're looking for more Preptober or NaNoWriMo tips, I'll link my playlist of videos as well. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on videos like this and on exciting videos like the one I have coming up soon where I'm going to be revealing a brand new cover for my book. Happy novel prepping and nanoing. And if my four month old lets me, hopefully I'll be able to host some writing sprints for you guys in November too. See you then.